What do you want, dude? That, huh? Nope. Give it up. You want me to throw it or not? You ready? Good boy. Good boy. Hey guys, what's going on? So if you guys don't already know, I travel okay. full time. And one of the things I did recently was upgrade our RV um, from our older one to this new Grand Design Imagine uh, 2022. One thing that was a small selling point for me, obviously, because of what I do, I blog, I write about griddles, and that's kind of how I support myself, is this one did come with a griddle. And I think when I was touring these RVs, I found a lot of them came with new griddles. Different brands, different sizes, different styles. Um, this one came with... If you can see that but this one came with a capital griddle now i've never heard of capital griddles i know nothing about them it does appear to be pretty well made it looks like it's got a there are three burner elements in an h pattern um similar to like a 17 or 22 inch blackstone i do believe it's going to get pretty hot just based on the fact that it, looking at the way it, it heats up and the, and the heating elements it it's putting out quite a bit of heat so i'm going to be seasoning this today because that's the first thing you do with any new griddle and as you can see this has a nice pretty factory finish um so we're gonna ruin that today all right so i did take a look at the instruction manual and the instruction manual was pretty straightforward much like a blackstone or any other common griddle these days um it says to go ahead and it says it comes oil blasted from the factory but it says you can wipe that off or clean that off with warm water and soap if you'd like or you can go straight into seasoning I'm gonna just heat it up a little bit, see if anything burns off, and then I'll start my traditional seasoning process, which will consist of olive oil. Um, there's so many different types of oils out there you can use, people recommend. Olive oil, Crisco, flaxseed, what's your avocado. What you wanna go with though is something that's gonna have a high smoke point because, sorry, I got the dog here. Because as you season this and as you cook on it, it's gonna start smoking at that rate of temperature of the oil. And if you use an oil that you really think is super tasty or you just really prefer it but it's got a low smoke point you're going to be smoking when you try to cook regular meals so what you want to go with is an oil that's got a high smoke point um this is around 400 ish degrees i'm not sure off the top of my head maybe 500 but quite a bit it's going to be able to cook most things before it ever starts smoking so i usually go with olive oil i've done flaxseed in the past but to each their own your mileage may vary just do what you like and then the only things i'm going to need for this are these three things right here some paper towels to clean and wipe as I go. Some olive oil for the actual seasoning itself. And then a typical griddle. This is just a cheap Walmart griddle spatula that I will use to move the um, paper towels around without burning my hands. So that's it. We'll jump right into it and I'll kind of update you as we go. So it's a little bit breezy today and I can tell this would benefit well from some wind guards or something similar to block that wind from heating it up. Those of you who have a tabletop griddle or a blackstone griddle, you know that this gap here, it's about a half inch to three quarter inch all the way around as wind comes in and shoots in through here it kind of pushes that flame down a little bit and it kind of slows the heating process they do sell aftermarket little wind guards blackstone sells them as well as third-party sellers on amazon um and i think even the guys over at griddle guard might sell them but nonetheless you can put grill uh wind guards around here and that's really going to help maintain the heat on your griddle consistently so if you have a breezy day and you're outside it's not ruining how you're cooking or doubling the time it takes to cook all right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is put a small amount of oil, wipe it over every portion of the griddle surface and let that start to bake off. You'll see we got a little bit of discoloration already. It's about to get worse, but that's a good thing. So that was about a quarter. All right, we got our first thin layer of oil on there. These cheap paper towels are actually not a good idea because they're starting to kind of flake as I use them. I'd either recommend, I'm gonna to switch to either a kitchen towel or see if I have different paper towels in there because I don't want that paper towel residue stick into or polymerizing with the oil onto the griddle surface. All right, so I switched over to a lint-free rag. I'm going to use this from here on out. Now be careful when you use something like this, it will do a good job of smoothing out your oil and rubbing it around without flaking or 
or leaving residue on your oil pan. However, because of this polyester like microfiber, whatever it is, um, if you do it while it's still super hot, you're going to melt this towards your griddle. So what I'll do is I'll burn this first batch of oil off. I'll let it cool a little, not create, not down to room temperature or anything, but enough that it's not going to melt this when I apply the next coat of oil. Then I'll crank the heat back up and let it do it again. I might even move my pickup truck over here just to kind of create a bit of a wind block because I've got a huge amount of breeze coming right over here. And I'm noticing even on the seasoning, if you were to center the burner, this burner's probably centered right here but our burn mark is getting centered just a bit up and right, which is kind of consistent with everything being, the heat being deflected just a bit over this way. So I'm gonna pull my truck around and try to smooth this out a little bit. I don't know if that completely did it, but I can already feel kind of a difference and I think that's gonna be good. So that first batch is kind of smoked off. I'm gonna lower the heat and I'll get ready for the next batch. What about you, knucklehead? What do you want? That. I get it. Would well, you want me to take it or not? Give me that. We're out here on a family member's farm in Georgia. We stopped by here on our way from Florida up to Wyoming. Oh, maybe y'all want to see the hogs we we caught in a trap. All right, gonna do the third coat of oil here. All right, and now we'll do coat number four and that'll be it. All right guys, so that's it. The seasoning process is done. I'm gonna do the final step, which is add a, remove the heat, add a single layer of oil, just like you would when you're done cooking your last meal after you clean it off. A very thin, light layer of oil, thin being the key. And then we will let that dry and store it as it is once it's cooled off. I won't put it back inside, obviously, until it's cooled all the way off. And that'll be it. Catch you on the next one.